Great. So before uh, continuing, uh, before listening to Miroslav Chris's presentation, let us uh, let me uh, just uh, emphasize that this is a joint webinar with uh, IEEE uh, TC uh, uh, on uh, nonlinear control systems, chaired by Andrea Serrani. And it is uh, uh, organized, co-organized with uh, Claudia Califano, the, who is a vice chair for education in the IFAC TC on nonlinear control systems, IFAC uh, uh, TC 2.3, and the vice chair for, for publication, Bayou uh, Varjaya, uh, from the TC, uh, the same TC, IFAC TC uh, 2.3. And myself is Christoph Prior. I'm chairing the, the, the IFAC TC 2.3 on nonlinear control systems. So now it is time to, to, uh, to go for the webinar. So, so today we have a, a fantastic, uh, we will have a fantastic presentation given by Miroslav Chrissy. So everyone knows uh, Miroslav. So he, he, he is, a, as you know, he's a professor in, uh, in San Diego, in the US. And uh, so here is a, a short bio sketch. So um, I'm sorry, uh, Miroslav, I, I should shorten your 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 list of uh, all your your uh, your skills and all your expertise in control theory and applications. And uh, let me just emphasize that uh, Miroslav has, has uh, written uh, many books on uh, nonlinear control system, adaptive systems, stochastic system, extreme seeking as well. And he is also a patient of uh, many uh, awards and many uh, prizes for IEEE and also for IFAC. So for IEEE, you can uh, see on this slide that you, he got some prize from the Control System Society. And for the IFAC uh, part, he, he got uh, many, uh, many prizes, including the IFAC uh, Nonlinear Control System Award given by the, this TC 2.3. And very recently, last month ago, the IFAC Distributed Parameter System Award, who, who, uh, that is a, a different uh, TC award. So he is a fellow of uh, many universities and uh, many societies, including IEEE and IFAC. And he, um, Miroslav is, uh, is also serving in many editorial boards and he is uh, spending so much time for our community. So which, uh, Miroslav is a great help for our community, of course, in control theory and uh, control applications in particular as editor of uh, System and Controllators. So I would like to, to thank you, Miroslav, for all your work you are doing for the community and for the, for the society with respect to control theory and control applications in the large. So today, uh, Miroslav, you, you suggested uh, this title, so you will talk about inverse optimal safe control. So maybe I can sh stop sharing uh, my screen and I, after your presentation, I will take again uh, the, the floor to present you the next webinar in one month. Okay, so except if you have any question, I, I can stop sharing my screen if I find the button yeah, here. And now, Miroslav, if you agree, you can share your, yours. Thank you so much, Christophe. I want to thank both you and Andrea Serrani for giving me the honor to uh, present uh, in this webinar series. And I want to thank everyone who has dialed in for, uh, for this lecture. Give me just a second as I get organized with uh, this window. <clears throat> okay. I would like to see both some of the audience and the entirety of my slides, and I do now. So I, I want to apologize in advance for any possible coughing down the line. I'm just getting over COVID. It's not in uh, Germany, by the way, that, that I picked it up. It was uh, at a conference after that in, uh, in New York. Um, so um, <clears throat> this topic, I chose a topic that is um, basically entirely uh, my single authored work. Uh, and I wanna share this, uh, this with you today. Uh, the bottom line of what I want to tell uh, has two components. One is that it's purely curiosity driven uh, by the question of whether safety filters uh, could be ensuring not just safety, but some form of uh, optimality of safety. And the other uh, uh, aspect is uh, very much utility driven. In other words, I wanna show you 
safety filter designs uh, that are entire families that go much beyond uh, the quadratic programming based uh, single formula safety filters uh, that have been around uh, for some eight, nine years now. So uh, I've uh, followed the development of CBF uh, based uh, safety control from the beginning uh, with great fascination and, uh, uh, but from the sidelines. Uh, and I've been noticing its relation with my work on control component functions, uh, including ISS CLFs, uh, stochastic CLFs, adaptive CLFs, uh, which go, uh, dates back to the 1990s. And I've been eager to jump in, into, the, into the fray and once uh, this field became big enough that neglecting the opportunity to say something to it uh, or was felt unacceptable to me. I, I finally put in the time to develop uh, these, these thoughts uh, finally. As far as my awareness of the work is concerned, uh, the what I would call the big bang in the field um, is this conference paper. In reality, there was prior work by Frank Algauer and uh, his co-authors. But it is this presentation uh, where I learned first about these, uh, these concepts. And I was sitting in the first row uh, of, uh, of Aaron Ames's presentation and noticing many, many things that uh, spawned so many questions. Um, I would say the contributions that I, I saw there were first that, um, so this is, this is maybe not a contribution, but a very important observation shared uh, with, with others that uh, constraints on the states can be formulated uh, through system outputs. Uh, <clears throat> another important thing presented was that, um, the uh, control barrier functions uh, can be related to the prior work on control the upper functions and the control designs based on control the upper functions. I also saw a connection, not, not emphasized there, with a, um, with a tool that dates dated back several decades, namely the tool of uh, parameter projection in adaptive control, which um, is also safety driven but it's the least safe of all possible tools, uh, most uh, liveness oriented, if you, if you wish. It, it tolerates the progression all the way to the, uh, to the safety boundary. And then only at that point, in a discontinuous fashion, uh, projects the vector field to the tangent of the uh, safety boundary. So that's one line of, of things I, I noticed in that talk. And uh, the other line was this quadratic programming, namely the minimum norm control, which, this is the most important thing, was in the form of LGH, where G is the input vector field, H is the uh, CBF. So how, how do you not uh, see the relation with LGV controllers? Let me remind you what, what the LGV controllers are. <clears throat> the, um, uh, the proper sufficiently full development of LGV controllers begins uh, in this book by uh, uh, Sepulchro, Jankovic, and Kokorovic, Constructive Nonlinear Control from 1997. So uh, CLF-based controllers are induced, introduced, which uh, uh, produce inverse optimality thanks to the fact of being of the LGV form, namely having LGV as a factor uh, appearing in those control laws. I was fascinated by th back then with that, so you see in 97, uh, I, I immediately uh, worked on uh, versions of those controllers uh, for systems with disturbances, not finding disturbances, where prior to that, the focus was only on achieving input to state stability relative to the disturbance, but one can achieve also uh, uh, inverse optimality in the sense of a differential game, a, a two-player game between, between the uh, disturbance and, uh, and the input. Namely, one can set, uh, solve explicitly 
nonlinear H infinity control problems, which had not not uh, been done um, uh, before because one runs into Isaac's uh, PDE equations. <clears throat> so this was my my first venture into this in ninety. Well, as published in ninety ninety eight. Uh, I followed this with another student for stochastic systems with a known unity constant covariance, and then for stochastic systems with an unknown time varying bounded with unknown with an unknown bound uh, covariance in the sense of input to state stability relative to the covariance and with inverse optimality and so on. <clears throat> so, inverse optimal stabilization has been. Uh, a subject of interest to me uh, more than two decades ago. So uh, the inverse optimality of safety uh, is something that fascinated me as a possibility the moment I saw uh, the paper by Ames and Cotton. Um, this has been one interest of mine <clears throat> in what is now called safety. There's another one that I didn't even know that I was working on safety but it appears that I was. Uh, the safety for high relative degree uh, barrier functions. <clears throat> so there is this paper from 2006 with Matt Bement from the Los Alamos National Laboratory on what was called at that time non-overshooting control. Uh, for engineers, you don't want an overshoot because for example, in machining, you could uh, you could um, create, uh, you, could, you could damage the workpiece to overshoot for, for uh, um, various vehicles. You can have collisions, you can, can, can have crashes of low flying aircraft with undershoots and so on. So our focus was on <clears throat> main, maintaining the system output strictly below or above a certain reference function and that reference function may actually have to uh, have to be followed or it may be a constant set point to which want to want to go in other words having an equilibrium a desired equilibrium at the, at the very boundary of the safe set so uh what you find in that paper uh, uh this 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 in, in essence for systems uh that are of a strict feedback form and the output is the first state, while the input is separated by n integrators. That's essentially a high relative degree um, control barrier function situation. And what you see here in this equation, five is a construction of a whole um, uh, sequence of uh, intermediate barrier functions so that the, uh, the last one is a proper CBF and with particular choices of gains that depend on the initial conditions, you achieve a target structure, which is a cascade of first order filters uh, whose all initial values are initiated positive and such a cascade of um, uh, first order filters with positive initial conditions uh, ensures positivity of, um, uh, of all the CBFs, um, including the, the main one, the, the one with a relative degree N. So, I did this work in 2006. Honestly, I didn't, I think, thought so little of it because I spent maybe a total of half a week on, on writing this up and revising it and, and getting, it, uh, getting it published. So I didn't think of it much at all. Didn't even connect that this had anything to do with safety, with CBFs, with what Ames and many others subsequently did. But in a conversation maybe two years ago, uh, Mergen Yankovic mentioned to me, hey, you know, there's a new thing called high relative degree uh, CBFs. And there is a, uh, there's a characteristic polynomial. Uh, and if it has all, um, all of its eigenvalues um, negative real and so on, you can achieve safety under certain conditions on uh, the initial conditions and so on. And it took me a while to realize that that actually, um, not the year, there is a 10 year. Uh, gap here. But that is actually what we were talking about in the non overshooting control paper, uh, with, with, with one difference that we actually provided a constructive procedure for the intermediate uh, CBFs and for uh, choosing the gains so that 
nothing is given up in terms of the safe set of the original um, um, system without restricting the initial conditions uh, other than the, uh, the initial condition of, uh, requiring the safety of the output. <clears throat> so this is, this is a second interest of mine. And in, in the meantime, having sort of recognized the potential and the interest of the field and the significance in driverless cars and numerous other uh, applications, I, I felt I could not afford to, to uh, not put some, some time into, into this. So uh, there is work that I will not have time to, to present on the so-called prescribed time safety uh, with time varying feedback laws, fixed time safety with non-smooth time invariant feedback laws with Andrei Polyakov. Uh, on safety filters for PDEs with my student Shimon Koga, on safety filters for extreme on seeking uh, with, uh, <clears throat> with my student Alan Williams, and so on. Uh, all right, so on, uh, on with uh, the inverse optimal safe control. So let me introduce some, some basics, namely, let me remind you of, of what uh, probably everybody knows. Um, so, we can consider system self-finding control with uh, a desired safe set that we want to make positively invariant. And that set, uh, set is defined with a barrier function that uh, should be maintained non-negative. A control barrier function is such a function H, which when, when uh, which at points in the state space, where the control input cannot affect the, the time derivative of that uh, barrier function, namely when LGH is zero, then it's on LFH is lower bounded by the negative of a class K function of uh, the barrier function uh, itself, which is expressed in this, this sentence in gray in another set of words. Uh, this function alpha is important. Uh, one would probably, in the analogy with both passivity and input to state stability, refer to that as a rate of dissipation of safety, as opposed to the dissipation rate of the of a storage function or, or, or a Lyapunov function in passivity and ISS, respectively. <clears throat> But there is a difference between uh, storage and Lyapunov functions and uh, specifically Lyapunov functions and barrier functions. For Lyapunov functions, we want them to be small. For barrier functions, we actually, when we want safety, we want them to be large. So a high alpha, what does it mean? It, high alpha actually means um, the permissiveness namely allowing the trajectory um, um, to, to approach the ba barrier rapid. So sort of the opposite of, of uh, um, in being an excess of safety on, on the system. So I might call it the permissiveness rate. Uh, one might also call it the liveness rate, but only when there is actually control uh, and a nominal control in that uh, system. So let's now introduce a nominal control. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you a very brief summary of the part of the paper by Ames uh, and co-authors that is of interest to my presentation. <clears throat> so suppose that somebody has developed a nominal controller. Maybe this is a purely uh, open loop um, control input, a function of own time uh, commanded by an operator, or maybe it's a, it's a feedback design that has been uh, produced for stabilization, a function of X, or maybe it's a, uh, uh, it's, it's a tracking uh, feedback law, so it's a function of both X and time. So that's why I, I suppress the argument. It could be various things, so let's just call it you not. <clears throat> so what is a safety filter? Uh, I'm uh, packaging things as economically as I can for the sake of presentation here. Uh, you will not 
find this expression exactly in any other papers, uh, and including uh, Ames's paper. So what is a safety filter? A safety filter is an addition to the nominal control, which possibly overrides to some partial degree the um, nominal control input U0. And it is given by this formula. Uh, it has LGH as a factor. It has this expression, maximum between zero and something else, which means that it's, it's an either zero or a positive. It can ne never be negative <clears throat> expression. And it has a division by LGH. And I will not get to, into the discussion of what notation I'm using that precludes actually ever a, a division by, uh, by zero. So what is omega? This omega is the key. That's the only thing not defined by, by the model. So this omega is a sum of uh, the, um, uh, the LFH in the presence of the nominal control and this um, permissiveness function. Uh, how does one understand that? I'm a, I will attempt to explain it to you in intuitive terms by giving it a name in English. Maybe not a super successful and clear name, but my, must, my, the best thing I can think of. So I would call this the margin of, safe, of the safety loss rate below allowed, meaning below the allowed safety loss rate. I'm referring to alpha in this case as the allowed safety loss rate, as opposed to the permissiveness rate, because now I'm actually, I actually have a, a control design that I'm pursuing, so I'm selecting as a design parameter an allowed safety loss rate, a rate of approach to the safety boundary that I, I as a designer, want to uh, permit. So <clears throat> that is the QP uh, safety filter design. But in what sense QP? What is, what is optimal here? Here's what is optimal. Safety is ensured, namely this feedback that you see here, guarantees that H dot is lower bounded by minus alpha, which implies that um, H is non-negative. But it does so in a way that ensures a minimal de deviation of U from the nominal U naught at that instant or at that point in the state space. <clears throat> and as the authors from that group acknowledge in some uh, publications with the word myopically or, or nearsightedly. In other words, sure, it's the minimal deviation I can get away with right now, but there may be a price in the future of deviating much more greatly, uh, namely ha having to pay a high price later for being greedy now for not being strategic and planning for the entire uh, long or infinite uh, time interval over which I want to maintain not only safety, but also uh, the closeness of the input to the nominal input you not. So this could look very abstract and complicated. Let's illustrate it with an example. I will choose the simplest example that illustrates something. And that's the simplest system in, in the world, so to speak. Just a single integrator. First order, linear. Uh, what is the safe set? I will um, pursue the safety uh, in the left half of the real line. In other words, I want my state to be negative and never cross zero. So plugging all of this into the formula, one gets the QP override feedback in this form, the maximum between zero and U naught plus X. You remember this from the denominator right here. Uh, and LGH is, is just minus one. So that's, that's the simple uh, QP override. Now, what is the overall control? 
Well, the overall control is the nominal uh, uh, control plus the QP override. <clears throat> when you add those two things together, you get a simple feedback, which is the minimum, namely the lesser of the nominal control you not, and minus X, which is the control that keeps X from overshooting X equals zero. And that is a simple control that is myopically focused on the present performance. So let me now introduce inverse optimal safety uh, through a chain of three ideas, three generalizations, from the simplest to the more the, to the most complicated. So motivated by inverse optimal stabilization, uh, it, it's, it doesn't take at least somebody who has uh, spent years on that subject back in the 90s, it doesn't take uh, um, it, it doesn't take much uh, of a dilemma how to formulate how to pursue uh, inverse optimality. Uh, having noticed that the QP feedback, let me remind you, having noticed that the QP feedback already contains this crucial factor of LGH, while this is non-negative. Uh, the idea of inverse optimality can be introduced by replacing the unity addition of the QP override by an addition uh, with, with a gain that is no smaller than two. And what does that guarantee? So I proved that this maximizes, so this is inverse optimal with respect to the following reward, not cost, but the opposite from cost reward function so we we want to maximize safety so we do we we do maximize a reward functional where safety namely the, the barrier function h appears uh, here outside of the integral as well as in this um, um in, in this payoff or, or reward uh, running uh, cost on the state which is complicated to write. That's always the case with inverse optimality. You don't get to assign what your optimal relative to, but you achieve optimality with respect to something that is acceptable to you, that is meaningful. And in what sense is this meaningful? It's, it's meaningful in the sense that L, uh, the, uh, the safety reward is uh, upper bounded by a class K function of the barrier function. In other words, if I make L maximized large, then I certainly make H large. I, I make safety satisfactory. So safety is rewarded. What about uh, the deviation of the control from U naught? We, we don't only want safety. We actually want to execute our task. We want U to be as close to U naught as possible for you know, uh, all the time when it, it's, it's, it's uh, okay to, to do that. Well, you see that the um, deviation of U from U naught is penalized. We maximize the negative of U minus U naught squared. So this is a meaningful optimization. Let's illustrate this, this back on the uh, scalar example. So instead, instead of adding uh, U QP override, by the way, bar to me means override. That's, that's the, the safety override uh, component. So if I add instead of one times uh, UQP bar, if I add two Q, uh, UQP bar, I end up with a controller that is different now. It's not just negative of the max of U naught and so on. Uh, I get a different uh, control law and this one minimizes the, the following cost function. Well, we must understand on a scalar example what this means. Let's, let's go one, one term at a time. First, minimizing X uh, at infinity, at infinite time, uh, should be thought of as a terminal safety violation or safety scarcity cost. I, violation is too strong a term because safety is not never violated, but we get too little safety. So that's the 
terminal cost. Uh, the running safety violation cost is given by this. The penalty on the deviation of U from U naught is there. Uh, <clears throat> and the following point is very important. When you look at this expression, you see the possibility of a division by zero, because certainly this max can be zero. So what does that mean? Is that is that something mathematically unacceptable? No, it's actually fantastic if, if you're an engineer. This denominator inflicts an infinite penalty on you uh, when it's deviating from you not, when you not acts safely. In other words, this term prevents choices of control that are stupid. Uh, giving up on the nominal feedback when, when it's safe to use the nominal feedback. Not, not, not penalizing it highly, but penalizing it, in, penalizing stupidity, not highly, but infinitely. Uh, and finally, what is the value function of this optimal control problem? It's simply plus x. All right, the second idea. Um, why restrict the safety filter design to just slightly modifying the QP feedback? I mean, I've, I've done very little. I've taken QP, just applied a gain to it. Let me remind you of what we're talking about. Um, so this, this is the QP override feedback. It's in the form of um, LGH times some non-negative expression. Why does this non-negative expression have to be exactly like this? From inverse optimal stabilization, we know that uh, we can design stabilizing LGV controllers, uh, which are linear in LGV, but multiplied by um, very general negative definite uh, matrices. So this introduces the following non-QP generalization of the notion of safety filters. So how about we consider designs where the augmentation of the, non, of the nominal control by a safety override involves a safety override, which is linear in LGH, but multiplied by a positive definite matrix that we get to um, try to design to ensure safety. So if we, are able to design such a more general safety filter um, and, and achieving safety simply means uh, satisfying this sort of Lyapunov-like uh, inequality. Then the following result is obtained. If we take that safety override, which ensures safety, but now multiply it by two or more, Remember, before I was multiplying by two or more, just the QP uh, override. Now I'm multiplying this more general override by two or more. The, the multiplication by two or more is what uh, results in inverse optimality. Then this uh, strengthened uh, safety filter maximizes this um, uh, this uh, reward functional. And I, I don't want to repeat the, 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 the story about L. L is a meaningful um, reward on safety. I just want to emphasize that you see here uh, that a quadratic form in the deviation uh, between control and the nominal control appears with a, with a weight that is uh, equal to the inverse of, of this uh, positive definite matrix employed in the design of the safety filter. By the way, <clears throat> this feedback law <coughs> ensures that the CBF, which we were either given or we have constructed for a given 
say set happens to be the solution to the following Hamilton Jacobi Bellman nonlinear PD given here for a meaningful L of X comma U naught, which I've defined before here. So the H being the explicit solution to uh, a monstrous object such as a nonlinear PD is enabled by us having the freedom to choose L for which L, for which H is a solution to, to, to that PD. So how about some example of such a construction, which is not of, an, of a QP form? So I give you the simplest uh, such construction that is not of the QP form that I can think of, and I call it a Sontag like safety filter because this, this um, follows straight out of the Sontag formula just modified for, from stabilization to guaranteeing safety. So take this expression, and please note that when u naught plus x are large relative to, to one, this is actually an approximation of, the, of, of QP. So I'm deviating as little as I can from QP just to show you that uh, one, one doesn't have to do QP, one can do things much different or things as little different as this formula. So this feedback, this Sontag-like um, safety override happens to minimize this expression. So again, we see some rather complicated looking integrand in, in this uh, uh, reward functional. We should try to understand it. I, 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 I presume that that's, that's what's on your minds. So let's try to understand this running cost. This running cost, think of it as a function of x, u naught, and u. Not as a function of time, but point-wise in the state, x, in the nominal input, and in control. So what is this running cost, which is the, the overall penalty on, the, the overall uh, penalty of unsafety or uh, def, uh, deficiency in safety, uh, and on the deviation from the nominal control. What does that actually look like? So let's examine that. So I'm showing you here <clears throat> in a, a planar coordinate system with coordinates uh, given by the state X and the deviation U, uh, from U naught uh, with a vertical axis representing the running cost. So let's examine that. First, we see some value here. What is that? Well, that's the value where u is equal u naught. And the meaning of having this value, uh, not value, I'm sorry, valley, valley, <laughs> valley. Having this valley uh, in this, uh, in this um, uh, surface plot means that the nominal control u naught is the optimal control when we are away from the boundary. Whereas when x is near the boundary, the emphasis is on safety. The running cost gets, gets larger no matter what. How about, uh, how about the control? Let me remind you what the control is. This was the control. Let's examine this control. What is the control doing um, as it is optimal in doing it? So I'm showing you here a coordinate system uh, in which X is on one axis uh, in the horizontal plane, U naught is on the other axis, and on the, the vertical axis is uh, the actual control. So what do we see here? We see here that when X is far from the boundary, the actual control U grows linearly with a unity slope relative to u naught. In other words, it's, it executes the nominal control. However, when we are close with x to, um, uh, to the boundary, then this override kicks in and you see this, this uh, uh, bending of the control and basically u naught 
is not executed, but something different. When U0 is highly positive, in other words, when the control is pushing insistently uh, towards violating the boundary, it is ignored even for fairly remote values of X from the boundary. So logical, uh, and it's just an interpretation of, <coughs> of the expressions. So a third idea comes from the question from this, this kind of a, a little annoying uh, repeated um, appearance of beta as a scaling factor. So must the optimal control all, all, always and only be a beta scaled version of some safe control? So let me remind you this. Must it always be in particular linear in LGH? And must the control, the cost on, on the control deviation from the nominal control be quadratic? Must it be like this? I mean, can we think, can we free ourselves of, of what we've been kind of coded to think about from uh, learning LQ, LQR? Can we go beyond that? And that's, that's what I pursue here. The answer is yes. And here's a fully general inverse optimal safety filter design with a non-quadratic cost on the control deviation. So remember from the previous section, the so-called idea two, that I was hypothesizing the possibility of designing a safety filter of the form R inverse times LGH, namely linear in LGH. But suppose now that we can design uh, a, a, a safety ensuring feedback of, uh, that is um, non-linearly dependent on LGH. And what do I mean by non-linearly dependent? I mean uh, in the form uh, where uh, there is a class K infinity function gamma uh, appearing um, here in this, in this form. So this gamma could be quadratic, it could be exponential, um, it could be various, various things. Suppose that we know how to design such, such broader families of controllers, and I'll show you, show you one example in a second. Then uh, a control log that is inverse optimal is given in this form. It's given by replacing gamma by its derivative, but that's not the only thing. It's also uh, multiplying the derivative by the argument of the derivative. Notice that, that there's a second power in the denominator here, whereas uh, it's only a first power in here. So it's not a, not a, not a trivial, just a take a derivative uh, type of modification. That is inverse optimal in the sense of maximizing this safety rewarding functional with a penalty on the control deviation that is given by this expression, where emphasis in red, L gamma. Gamma is this class K infinity function in the original safety design. What is uh, calligraphy or script L? This is an trans a transformation, an operation called the Legendre potential transport. Uh, which for a function of a scalar, for a scalar valued function of a scalar uh, a non negative variable R, is the integral of the inverse function of the derivative of that gamma on which L operates. In particular, if gamma is quadratic, L gamma will be quadratic. But in all other cases, it gets more, more interesting than that. And I will show you one such more interesting case. So let's return to our scalar example. <clears throat> and let me design, rather than a safety fil filter of the form that you've seen before, which was uh, the override was simply minus max of zero comma u naught plus x. Let me design uh, this safety filter. Trust me, this does ensure safety. It's in fact safer than the QP override. 
Uh, then the formula from the previous page produces a safety filter that is inverse optimal. And its form is given like this. Please note that uh, this is locally linear because we have a locally linear function in the square root multiplied by the square root. So this is locally linear, but globally growing at the rate of exponential of the square root times the square root. So what does this safety filter minimize? This is the interesting part. You know, what, what kind of optimality do we get? <clears throat> we get the inverse optimality in the sense of the Legendre potential transform acting on the Cauch function of uh, uh, the penalty on the deviation of the control from uh, the nominal control. But what is the Legendre potential transform of the Cauch function? So after you play a little bit with these calculations, you get this expression. If you look closely at this expression, it's easy to see that the growth of this function is sigma times ln of sigma, sigma ln of sigma for large sigma. In other words, it's super linear, but subquadratic, somewhere between linear and quadratic, which means that I don't penalize as strongly as quadratically. In other words, I'm more tolerant than in the QP design of deviations of U from U naught. I emphasize safety, I prize safety, but I sacrifice the following of U naught. I sacrifice liveness some, some, somewhat. One can also construct the opposite type of example where safe, uh, where, where liveness is, uh, is favored and safety is, uh, is not as strongly emphasized. Not lost, but not as strongly emphasized in the optimality. Now let's let's talk about uncertainties, safety under disturbances. So let me introduce now. Let me consider a system affine in not only control but also in a disturbance. That's why I have this these vector fields G1 and G2. So the disturbance and the control input input vector fields. Uh, the change I want to keep things as similar to what you've already seen as possible. So I'm introducing a safety filter uh, where you can see almost no difference relative to the QP safety filter, but there is a difference. This omega is different now. This omega is now <clears throat> 45 by this addition. Uh, it's, I don't have time to explain the logic for this addition, but let's note that this problem formulation allows the disturbance to kick the system outside of the safe set. And for the barrier function to be negative. So when the barrier function is negative, this term kicks in, it becomes strictly positive. This whole thing is strictly positive. Uh, with a minus sign, it's negative. With this minus sign, it's again positive. So this extra term uh, makes the override more readily kick in than in the absence of a disturbance we, when we don't have this, this term. What do we achieve? We achieve this property given here, which if you take a look for a second, it looks awfully like ISS, but with some strange differences in the sign and in the direction here. And indeed, it's called input to state safety by some authors. I call it disturbance to state, state safety to, to emphasize actually the role of this property in control design. So uh, <clears throat> what does it really mean? It means that the safety will be lost in proportion to the strength of the disturbance. Or if you uh, consider this in the sense of minus h, you note that this is an expression that says that 
the deficit of safety is bounded in proportion to the strength of the disturbance, namely exactly as in ISS, where the state is bounded in proportion to the uh, strength of the disturbance with a with a gain. Uh, in this case, my my notation for the gain for this ISS or DSSF uh, gain is rho. <clears throat> How about not deterministic but stochastic disturbances? I will spend very little uh, time on on this slide. So if you consider ETO systems and uh, move ahead with developing the same idea, you get a QP-like safety filter where the omega uh, portion has been altered through the presence of this Hessian term, which is the result of the ETO calculus um, um, applying to, to the CBF, the second route. <clears throat> now, um, just as I pursued various extensions to the notion, various extensions beyond the QP safety for the notion of safety in the absence of disturbances, deterministic or stochastic, those extensions can be pursu pursued both for deterministic disturbances and stochastic disturbances. You can imagine now, now going, going into, into quite a few uh, generalizations, and I will show you only one. The most complicated one, and maybe the most interesting one uh, in, in the sense of what I have not shown you yet. And that'll be the case The case, in the stochastic case, not doing it for the sake of stochastic, <clears throat> but uh, uh, to illustrate the situation where uh, the intensity of the noise is not known and unity as in standard stochastic control, but it is unknown, time varying, and its bound is unknown. In other words, you have to treat the stochastic case the way we treat input to state stabilization. I used to call that in the late 90s, noise to state stability, NSS. <clears throat> now, uh, the next few slides have the most complicated and the longest expressions. And these expressions are not the point. I, I, I will have them there, but I don't expect you really to, to uh, try to digest them. I wanna get to the punchline two slides from now, which we can focus on and examine. So just as before, I assume that some safety ensuring um, override control can be designed for a certain system. And when I say safety ensuring for the stochastic system, I mean safe, uh, ensuring safety in the mean. Uh, and then under that assumption, I claim that there exists another control law, which is inverse optimal. And that's what I want us to, to, to examine for a second. This cost, this uh, reward functional. So see that this reward functional now includes uh, penalties, both on the control deviation from the nominal control and on, on the intensity of the noise. So these two inputs, the noise, and our control designer playing a, a zero sum differential game. The noise is trying to minimize safety at the least effort to employ. So it doesn't work, want to work too hard. It wants to harm you, but with little effort for itself. While you're designing a controller as before, trying to minimize maximize safety with a with a minimum deviation from your knot. The proof of this also produces a worst case feedback for the uh, disturbance. Those of you, who, uh, I mean, the, the the majority of you uh, who are nonlinear control designers and and who work on ISS uh, wonder if beyond the optimality. Uh, ISS of some sort is ensured because optimality does not guarantee safety. Optimality uh, and safety are different things. <clears throat> so the answer is positive. We can ensure noise to say safety 
in, in this form, which should remind you of Sontag's uh, Lyapunov characterization of, of ISS from his uh, first paper. And once uh, I convince you that uh, this form of noise to state safety is uh, guaranteed, you may likely ask, and how about the integral uh, noise to state sa uh, safety? And the answer is yes. The integral noise to state safety is also guaranteed uh, in the mean. What does this expression means, mean? It means that uh, this portion, which in the absence of noise, would be kept non-negative may become negative but only in proportion to to the intensity of the disturbance in an integral in time sense <clears throat> uh, so i've prepared slides uh that you know uh, could go on for for another 15 20 minutes i will not do that to you uh the most important among them is an extension uh to to pds maybe i can use a couple of minutes just to give you an idea of what it means to pursue safety for pds so and this is a joint work with my former student schumann koga who is uh, here with us <coughs> this uh diagram that you see here is a sketch of what's happening in additive man manufacturing or in 3D printing by laser sintering. I'm ta not talking about the, about the robotics aspects of 3D printing. I'm talking about the metallurgical aspects of 3D printing, the phase change between solid and liquid and liquid and, and, and solid. Uh, we have a PD system with a moving boundary between the liquid and the solid. I, the idealized notion of the control of that is that we apply heat flux, but as engineers, we know that we cannot apply heat flux. We apply some heater uh, whose input is the, the voltage. So we have some dynamics between uh, the voltage input and the heat flux. What is the safety that uh, is demanded in this problem? The main safety demand is that as we progress in melting a solid and moving this interface to a desired set point, we don't want in this liquid the temperature to fall below the melting temperature TM anywhere, because then we've cre created islands of solid within liquid. The, the model no longer uh, holds. So mathematically and in an engineering sense, everything is, is, is lost. So safety is now an infinite dimensional concept. At each point X in this uh, one dimensional domain, we want to keep the temperature above the melting temperature. And in addition, we want to avoid the overshoot of S beyond the set point because 3D printing amounts to melting, for example, only up to a specific um, depth. And from that point on, the story gets complicated. And I will spare you the details. I, will just, just, I just want to give you a hint that the uh, there is a barrier function which is not a vector of barrier functions, but a function of barrier functions, a continuum parameterized by the state spatial variable x. Fortunately, those CBFs, those infinite many CBFs represent the zero dynamics. So one is not designing directly for those infinitely many CBFs. There's a CBF that models the objective of not overshooting. This is a, this total energy deficit the sur is a surrogate for that. There's a CBF that requires that the heat flux never goes negative because by a particular theorem for uh, parabolic PD is the so-called maximum principle, not Pontiagin, it's a totally different maximum principle. The, uh, uh, the temperature will uh, uh, remain above melting as long as the heat flux never goes negative, as, namely as long as we never ever cool. Uh, and so on, there's a backstepping transformation because this is a relative degree to 
um, um, CBF uh, situation, and so on. I will spare, spare you the detail. There are two objectives to 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 be achieved. So so there are two overrides, not one. At the end, let me just tell you if if an operator approaches this system with a malicious um, <clears throat> intent to mistreat this uh, the system and applies a sinusoid with a, with a negative mean, this override will allow that operator to cool the liquid, but never to cool it below freezing. And how it does it is shown here with this voltage input, which alternates between three possibilities. The override for preventing the overshoot, the override for preventing the cooling input, and uh, following the operator's input in between. So with that, let me skip these other slides and thank you so much for your attention. Oh, thanks a lot, Miroslav, for this great presentation. So, congratulations. It was very, very fantastic. Very <coughs> nice I like it so much. I hope that you are uh, that you are good. And uh, I'm sorry to to see how COVID uh, uh, affected you. And but anyway, you you succeed to give a get great presentation. So thanks a lot, Miroslav. You you were able to find the energy for that. Thanks a lot. So we, we have many questions. Um, maybe we can take uh, them in the order. So the first one is, is one one from uh, uh, what about how can we know the minimal control effort work right for a system to track a desired trajectory? So it is related to your U zero controller, I guess. In uh, I, want to I, I think. I, I I don't have an answer to uh, to this. I don't know the minimal control for for tracking the desired trajectory. Okay. Uh, go on. Uh -huh. This is still an appellate question. So, and second one is your question from Umar. Um, ah, yeah, he was to compare with other techniques, including uh, a metal Jacobi reachability analysis techniques. So I'm not familiar with this technique. Do you know? Uh, I, I would not be be making comparison between between methods that uh, uh, that formulate different assumptions that have uh, very different uh, computational uh, demands that have very different uh, um, analytical nature and so on. I mean, look, this is uh, this is not a compet <laughs> competition. We're not seeking winners here. His is no. one, one set of uh, set of possibilities, and you, uh, I, 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 maybe this is an opportunity for me to be candid and clear <clears throat> because I was rushing. That uh, this this gives you a lot of stuff that is explicit and frees you of uh, of uh, solving Hamilton Jacobi equations, but you better be uh, a pretty well trained designer of feedback laws. And in some cases, you might uh, actually open your mind to the redesigns of the CBFs. This is this is something uh, something that that uh, is very rarely emphasized in the CBF conversations, as compared to how emphasized it was in CLF conversations. I mean, the whole CLF field was about designing CLFs. Uh, so. Uh, if you're just given a a, um, a, a boundary, uh, the the CBFs it should not be something treated as given, but something something treated as to be constructed along with a controller. So, uh, so <laughs> minimal computational effort, but a maximal uh, analytical um, development. I see. So maybe I can take the opportunity to ask. To ask you my question, so I have several questions, but I have a, a question about, uh, you know, you know, backstepping controller when you you succeed to design step after steps, uh, uh, CLF and control stabilizing control. So do you know if we can also get a recursive algorithm to compute a, a safety controller? Is it something that you you have? Uh, 
Thank you. Thank you for asking this question. This is really uh, the most, maybe the, the most important thing because, you know, for, for mechanical systems, for vehicles, mm -hmm. position is a, a, any constraint on the position yes. relative to the force or any constraint on, on an angle relative to a torque input is a relative degree to uh, uh, CBF. So yes. this is a this is a key question in all systems, but relative degree one systems, which are <clears throat> a rarity. So the answer to this is yes, I didn't even know, but <laughs> this, this already is in this uh, 2006 paper. That is the construction. Okay. Uh, I didn't even know of, of CBFs, but these are CBFs. The first CBF, not marked as CBF, is h equals r of t minus y, which, which imposes a requirement that y the, the, the output y does not exceed uh, the reference or the set point r. And the rest are constructions of additional CBF so that the CBF Zn is of relative degree one and, and therefore a valid uh, CBF. In the process of this construction, two things are crucial. One crucial thing is that the target system, this is a backstepping construction, but the target system is not the tri-diagonal target system uh, that, that we're used to seeing uh, for other backstepping designs. It's not tri-diagonal, it's a cascade. It's a diagonal plus a bunch of ones above the, above the diagonal. And uh, the additional crucial thing is that you have to choose the gains that are sufficiently high relative to the <clears throat> relative to the initial condition if your intent is to not make any sacrifices in terms of the uh, if you don't want to restrict the initial velocity but also restrict the position mm -hmm. so by choosing the gains of the controller sufficiently high you can you can handle a situation where you have a vehicle that is heading rapidly to a very nearby obstacle and allow an arbitrary level of that initial velocity uh, and and prevent uh, the collision with uh, with with that obstacle that is very unconventional making gains dependent on initial conditions one probably would, would not be able to estab establish that such a system uh, defines a semi-group, but uh, as engineers, we should not be uh, shocked by the, the possibility of employing the initial uh, conditions in the, um, uh, in, in the game design, if, if you say that, but a disturbance will always mess, mess, uh, mess up your uh, any anything that you do for specific initial conditions. Then we go to the case of disturbance to safety, where a certain violation of safety in proportion to uh, to the um, uh, magnitude of the disturbance is allowed. I, I'm sorry for keeping Frank uh, waiting with his raised uh, hand. Frank? Yes. <laughs> yeah, th thanks very much, Miroslav, for a very inspiring and stimulating talk. Um, this is, if I understand that right, a very much input to state centric uh, view on things. And uh, also in the sense of for the feedback, you really require the state to be measured. We all know how to deal with that in the normal uh, cases of our problems. But here we have a very special situation. You want to achieve uh, what's on your slide now for exactly. So at any point in time, without any uh, with only devi devi deviation, without any epsilon, you want to uh, achieve something strictly. Can you comment on whether this is at all an approach that can go in direction of an output feedback scheme involving some observer or anything like that? Uh, Frank, people will accuse us of having coordinated a very easy, very friendly question on your part to me. Because I happen to be on, 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 on this slide. And if you flip to, to page four of this paper, 
there is actually an output feedback uh, safety design. So here's what, what happens when, when, when you have to use an observer. <clears throat> the initial condition of that observer uh, will be arbitrarily far from the actual unmeasured state. The observer will be convergent, but it may have a large transient and that observer error state will act as a disturbance. So in that observer <coughs> section of this paper, I combine the observer design with disturbance to safe safety and achieve a result that says that the safety violation will be at most in proportion to the initial state estimation error and that with sufficiently high gains in the controller, not in the observer, but in the controller, in the, in the safety override, uh, I can make that violation as low as possible. Of course, you know, I'm not talking about uh, control saturation in, in any of that because there, there are prices in terms of the, the, the magnitude of gains that will translate into, into a large control for, for a minimal sacrifice and safety. But that, that uh, is already initiated but I have not done anything beyond, beyond it, uh, even though I should. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay, so we have two other questions. Maybe you can go to the next question from the chat. So Sean <coughs> Xiaotan uh, commented first about the fantastic talk you gave. I agree with him. So could you please uh, comment how uh, it can help your approach to design safe controller for general systems? So I don't know. I'm not sure to understand. Uh, the I, 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 in this particular presentation, I give nothing on the design of, of CBFs. The, the, the CBF design uh, is <clears throat> either a given or something that is pursued simultaneously with, uh, uh, with the design of the safety filter as uh, was the case back with uh, CLF uh, design. So I, that, I, I don't touch on that uh, in, in, in here. And Daniel um, asks for the stochastic filter, where is the control action acting the deterministic part of the stochastic one. If it is on the stochastic part, how would the implementation of the controller? No, no, it's 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 all on what you would call the deterministic part. Let's uh, let's remind ourselves of the Ito equation. <laughs> Yeah, so here we go. This is a system affine in control as one input. And in um, this brown uh, differential of the Brownian motion, namely uh, white noise input with, a, with an incre incremental covariance. So the control acts here. That, that, that I think you would, you're referring to that as the deterministic part. We don't, we, we have no access on this. This is, this is the adversary. This is the adversary that is trying to destroy safety, but it's being kind of cheap and uh, acting to minimize the cost to itself while um, uh, destroying our safety. And that's, uh, that's its best strategy. Thanks for that. So is there any other question? No? Okay. So let me let me thanks again, uh, Miroslav, for the great uh, lecture. And thank, thanks a lot, uh, Miroslav, for the, the great presentation. Your great congratulation, congratulations for this fantastic work. So, um, thank you so much. Yeah.